Hey guys, so we are doing part two. So I um, developed this Zentangle pattern, which basically is like a series of um, like fish scales. And then those scales are split up into three sections. The top section being these lines. The middle section being colored in completely. And then that bottom section, and I'm coloring very fast. And then that bottom section stays plain white. So you get the idea. Um, but I think it looks pretty cool. And that's the pattern I'm going to utilize for my project. So taking my hands. Okay. Today for part two, your job is to pick which hand is going to be the positive space, which one's going to be the negative space. And then from there is to insert your patterns. So um, I do need to extend my hand over here so that the wrist continues on. Same thing over here. Okay, so now that I've got all my borders and edges and I know where I'm going, um, I'm going to make this left hand the positive space and the right hand is going to be my negative space. So I'm just going to show you how to get started and then you're on your own. You're going to have a different pattern. So what yours is going to look like is going to be completely different than mine. Um, but I'm going to set it up so that I am drawing. I'm going to start in the middle and kind of develop my pattern from there. And I've already decided, nope, I need to start over. That's going to be too big and the pattern isn't going to look nearly as cool. I need to make my pattern a little bit smaller. As I was developing it over here, I realized that this is great but it and it's nice to show you guys on camera, but it's just too big. It doesn't become as dynamic as it is when it's smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and put three sections there. And setting up my pattern is probably the most important part is making sure that my spacing doesn't get all wonky and you stay as consistent as possible. It's a little harder to go backwards, but I chose to to make sure that kind of the scales look like they were in the right spot on the hand. Okay, so I would continue that all the way up. I think you get the idea there. So then in the negative space, I do have to be careful when I get into my fingers because um, I want to just stop the pattern. So the pattern needs to stop and then just keep going. So I will show you that really quick is you want to make sure that you don't like squish the pattern in. You want to pretend like it keeps it going and it just gets cut off by where your hands cut off from the fingers, etc. So that one would come to here and that would go that way. So you have to really kind of stop and think a little bit about how it would fit within your the interior of this side of their hand. So if I'm moving over here to this side, and um, I'm also going to switch the direction because I think that'll look more interesting. So I'm going upward this way. So I'm going to flip this all the way around and make sure that I am going a different direction um, on this one. So I think I'm going to go this way. And then again, I am just using my negative space which gets a little challenging at times as far as fitting everything in and having it kind of go off to the edge. So you probably will spend the most time is getting everything like the step one kind of set up on your paper to make sure spacing is right and that you didn't like put something weird in some space. So I have to kind of pretend over here like this one would keep going. And so it would kind of come up from there. So this does get a little tricky. So if this meets here, then this would be where my next one would be. Okay. 
And then as I do this, and you could almost like kind of like carefully draw on your hand and then go back and erase it. As long as you're staying nice and light, you could definitely do that. And I might do that for my pattern because it's so specific about spacing that it's getting a little challenging. So you can see that light, I'm kind of sort of making marks super lightly so that I know where my start and stop points are. Same thing over here. Okay, so I think you get the concept of filling in your negative space and positive space. So again, I would want to make sure I really carefully erase all of this because eventually when we're all done with the pen and ink portion, we are going to um, erase out that pencil, okay? So then the step two portion of my project is to go in and develop my patterns all the way. So my step two is to add these inner arcs. Okay, and then step three, for me at least, is to start adding the details. Now, if you really get a hold of your pattern, you can sort of skip step three, meaning the details section, and you can go ahead and grab a Sharpie. Whatever Sharpie you have available, you might need a fine tip depending on how old or new your Sharpie is and how detailed you have. But I'm pretty confident in my ability after I do step one and step two with my pencil to go in and add the details and the tracing directly with a Sharpie and sort of save myself some time. Because then I can go in and it makes it a lot easier to do the dark colored in sections. But honestly, I would probably wait to do all these colored in sections until I was done doing all of the tracing so that I don't accidentally um, go into some of these shapes just because I was rushing. So again, if you are able to, if your design allows it, go ahead and skip the pencil portion after you've practiced a few times and that'll allow you to kind of develop and go move a little faster. So. This whole hand will be filled in, and then this whole negative space will be filled in when we're all done. So I don't want you to watch me the whole time. That's super boring, and you need time to do this. So go ahead and work on this. Email me if you need any help or assistance. You want to send me a picture on Seesaw and give me your progress. That's totally fine, too. I will continue to develop mine. And then um, tomorrow, we are going to meet all together to talk about how we finish it up, Erase it, get it all set up, and put it on Artsonia. Have a good day, everybody.